What is up guys, Zach here with Dr. EyeballMD. If you're new to the channel, I'm a second year ophthalmology resident. Tomorrow we're going to be doing a call shift from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, we might see some crazy things, so I'll take you guys along for the ride. Roll the intro. Okay, so we're driving in now, we hadn't had a call until just now, and we got two um, by the same ER doctor. But one of them is for a guy who had uh, repair for tractional retinal detachment um, five days ago, and then woke up having eye pain, um, unable to open the eye. So we'll go take a look at that, make sure it's not endophthalmitis or uh, the pressure's not really high or something. And the other one is a pseudotumor patient with worsening vision, so we'll go check her vision and all. By the way, this is one of the cool little tools that I use uh, while I'm on call, going all over the hospital, seeing patients in their rooms. It's a portable slit lamp, and it lets me do bedside uh, slit lamp exams, so I can look for uveitis and do really up close exams if I need to. All right, so saw that patient. Um, his pressure was 78, uh, super high. Had a small high FEMA. And the AC actually looked formed, so it wasn't shallow. Um, so I don't know, maybe there was some overfill of the bubble or, or maybe the, the hyphema and the red blood cells are kind of clogging the, the drainage angle. But anyways, we're giving him drops, Diamox, trying to bring that down. Uh, and then we have another patient with the um, IIH, which is like pseudotumor, um, but also some questionable venous sinus uh, stenosis on outside imaging, uh, who's having headache. Um, so we're just going to look right now and check for papilledema, which she had three days ago in clinic. Uh, they asked us to check again, so a uh, good chance that's not gonna be changed much, but we'll take a look. Um, and then we have another patient coming in um, as an outside hospital transfer for a uh, burn injury with perm solution, like hair perm solution to the eye. Uh, so we'll, we'll check that. So they said the pH was eight um, and they tried to irrigate, but we'll try to get the Morgan lenses in and, and irrigate it down to normal pH and do eye exam when they get here. So that's where we are. And it is 10.49. That patient with pseudotumor basically is stable eye exam, stable nerve edema in both eyes. So we'll let neurosurgery kind of evaluate for shine if they think she has venous sinus stenosis and uh, long repeat MRI, MRV. And uh, in the meantime, while we're waiting on the patient with the chemical injury they haven't arrived yet the other hospital down the street is consulting us for corneal erasion versus uveitis versus the sty anyways we'll go see what that is it's like five minute drive down the road but it's still tough to cover three different hospitals at one time because um, you have to drive back and forth and getting paid by both simultaneously is kind of tough to coordinate everything but we'll go try to see this one in the ER and then get back over here and uh, still have to address the, um, the alkali burn um, in that one patient who hasn't arrived. And then the other patient with the high pressure, we're still trying to get that down. So we're giving Dimox and doing drops and we'll check on him when we get back too. Time is 11.15 right now. So this shift runs from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday um, and then another resident will take over from 4 to 4 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, so we only have like four and a half hours left of this shift but it seems like the afternoon is when everything seems to like hit the fan and in the ER at least. Uh, it's when everybody comes in and everything starts piling on all at once so you just got to be good at coordinating and seeing multiple patients at once you know dilate one go start the exam on the other, then write the note, and then come back to the dilated patient. You're just kind of juggling a lot of stuff, so it's 
good to be able to multitask when you're all alone because it's basically just me um, running around to these three hospitals. It's not like a team of us rounding or anything. It's just me uh, driving back and forth, seeing everything. And this is uh, at least one of the hospitals, the busiest ER in the country. So, you know, we get a lot of stuff. So it gets busy. Okay, so that patient um, that we're seeing over here in the other ER, uh, it looks like she just has really, really terrible dry eyes. It's like really dry. Um, I don't see any uveitis or anything like that. The pressure's okay. So we'll dilate her and take a look, but I think that's all it is. Um, so we will wrap this up. She's dilating. So we write the note while she dilates. Then we go do the dilated exam, uh, come back, finish the note, then go back to the other hospital see if that alkali burn patient's gotten there yet uh, and check the pressure on our first patient who had um, the post vitrectomy elevated pressure so we'll do that all righty we finished up um, at this hospital basically she just had really bad dry eye the rest of the exam was unremarkable no uveitis or eye infection or infiltrating the cornea or anything going on in the posterior segment so she did have a hordeolum too, so she's already being treated. Anyways, so we're done with that. Um, and now the patient with the burn injury has arrived, so we're gonna head back over. Um, I told him just go ahead and check the pH real quick and then place the Morgan lens, which is kind of just a fancy little contact lens connected to IV tubing that allows us to irrigate the eye. I'll show you what it looks like. And in the meantime, we we're also getting called by the urgent care clinic for a patient that's already known to our clinic with vitreous hemorrhage that we're treating and sounds like worse than vitreous hemorrhage is continuing to bleed. Um, we're already injecting him and getting him set up for laser. But anyways, we'll head back over to uh, the main hospital and then we will check pressure on our first patient and check the uh, chemical injury. That's all we have right now. Um, so let's do that. Okay, so we got, uh, we saw that patient um, with the chemical injury. It's been a while, it's like since this morning that she got it in her eye. pH is actually pretty good, it's around seven. We'll go ahead and irrigate just to make sure we get everything out of there and uh, just to be thorough with it. But, um, so we'll let a, a liter of saline run through the Morgan lens, which is this. It's just a, a lens that goes inside the eye, under the eyelids, and then this end here uh, connects to IV tubing and. You can run normal saline or lactated ringer through it. So we're just gonna let that run and then we'll come check on her after. In the meanwhile, we'll go check the pressure again on our guy who got the Dimox. So we got the alkali burns pH down to normal still, it's fine. So um, we're gonna follow her up in clinic. And while that happened, they grabbed me as I was walking through the trauma bay talking about our other patient with the retina doctor um, for a guy who fell on a shard of bamboo. It looks like it probably went into his eye um, so I came up here to get the um, portable soot lamp. And so we'll go down and take a closer look. They're gonna get a CT orbit. So um, we got that. We have two other regular ED consults, one for an AIDS patient with uh, decreased vision and another for a patient with history of retinal detachment. So getting pretty blown up at the moment, but uh, we'll just knock it off one at a time. Okay, so bringing the globe patient over to get a better look at the slit lamp. So when we think it's a globe, we just put a shield on it, tell, tell the ER doctors not to touch it, don't check pressure. No pressure on the globe so it doesn't expulse the internal contents. Um, so I'm gonna try to get a little bit better look here. There's a lot of blood in the eye, but probably a globe it looks like. And then the CT hasn't uploaded, so we will look at that too here in a minute. So here's the CT. You can see the right eye is round. Uh, it's formed and that's normal. And then if you look on the left side, it looks deflated. There's actually a gas bubble inside the eye. So a completely deflated globe. Um, so definitely open globe injury. You're gonna need to go to the OR. Oh, okay. So we've got the globe patient who impelled his eyeball with bamboo. 
Um, he's getting ready to go to the OR. Actually, he's already up there. Um, we went ahead and did some IV antibiotics while he was in the ER. Um, and then we are getting, I had another patient with terrible type one diabetes and a tractional retinal detachment, uh, Mac off. So uh, we'll actually just get him scheduled for surgery outpatient. Um, and then he had, you know, the right eye was holding on uh, just by a thread. So anyways, we'll, we can address all that outpatient with ABAS and uh, PRP and sign up the left eye for surgery. Uh, then I have another patient, the one uh, from earlier this morning that we've been working on all day to get his pressure down. It's come down some to about 48, uh, but we talked with the retina docs, the glaucoma docs. Um, they want to, we're going to treat with like a tap and a vascular tap and inject, see if we can get the pressure down and treat any underlying neovascularization um, that might be there. So we'll do that. Um, I've also got another patient um, that I'm working on with AIDS. He's got pretty bad uh, skin lesions. Uh, kind of cloudy corneas. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what he's, uh, I'm not sure exactly what he has going on in the back of his eye, but I dilated him. I'm gonna go back and look here in a minute. Uh, really poor vision, so I'm thinking something infectious, but we'll see. <sighs> but it's finally four, so they're gonna stop paging me and I have time to actually get all this uh, together. So let's get it done. So we finally saw all the ER consults. The last one was an AIDS patient with uh, like corneal edema in both eyes. Uh, he had a lot of AC fibrin, um, the fibrin in the front part of the eyes, uh, and then the pupils are just sneak down to the lens, um, and the eyes are super injected. Uh, and then he's got these spots all over his body. The derm thinks is probably primary syphilis. That's probably all syphilis. So we'll recommend a uh, lumbar puncture and send for VDRL. Uh, to see if that's what it is, because then he'll need IV penicillin to treat syphilis. Um, so we finished all the ER stuff. I still haven't written any note, and I need to go see one inpatient that we're following for burns who developed uh, bad scarring, cicatricial ectropion, that causes exposure keratopathy, and then he's perfed, and we've been putting BCLs in glue, and uh, he hasn't been stable for the OR, but we finally did a tarsorphy on both sides. So I'm gonna go make sure the tarsorphies are holding, uh, the glue and the bandage contact lens is still in, and then hopefully get out of here and go write these notes. Okay, so I just saw our inpatient burn and burn patient, and his um, glue that was basically covering the perforation that he had underneath the bandage contact lens had come off. The, le the lens was still on, so I had to re-glue that and then replace the bandage contact lens all underneath a, a tarsorphy, a permanent lateral tarsorphy, so that wasn't easy. So I got it in, so hopefully the AC will kind of reform. All right, so it's like almost six o'clock now, and we're finally just leaving the hospital. We finished everything. Um, seeing people wise. I still gotta go write the notes. I already told all the ER, ER doctors and stuff like what we recommend doing. So I just gotta go put the notes in now. I'm gonna go eat something first because I'm dying. Oh. All right guys, so that pretty much wraps up the day. That was a pretty crazy day overall actually. We ended up having an open globe injury, completely deformed eye, alkali burn. We had to treat in the trauma bay, terrible diabetic retinol, tractional retinal detachment, pseudo tumor. And we also had a patient with syphilis. So that was a pretty crazy day overall. That wraps up the vlog. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. I'll see you guys next time.